I got to think, Tim, you're pretty happy with number six in the country, second in the Big Ten. Uh, it's hard. It's really hard to complain, Mark. Uh, you know, it, they were. It was number one at one point earlier in the year, and of course, we knew that wouldn't last. But you know, the way that thing, things are going, uh, even yeah, even despite having uh, a decommitment on signing day, uh, Andre Roy, a three-star offensive lineman, flipped to Maryland. Uh, just that Penn State held on to you know all the all the key core members of their class, which. Include twenty in total, but it includes you know, Drew Hour, number one rated, number one quarterback in the country. Nick Singleton, number one running back in the country, and also the Gatorade High School Player of the Year, uh, Saquon Barkley. Made a nice video presentation to him, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, and then Caden Saunders, you know, uh, actually was the very first commitment in the twenty two class back when he was just a three-star kid and hadn't blown up yet. Now he's, you know, borderline five-star and, you know, Penn State got in on the ground level of him. That's, you know, it's just, like it goes to show uh, this, this staff, I mean, I mean, one constant with James Franklin and, and staff is the ability to uh, eye these, eye this great talent when they're still under the radar as, as three-star kids before they blow up and become four or five stars. So, you know, Saunders, Aller, just another couple of people in line with that. And of course, I'd be remiss I didn't mention tonight Dennis Sutton, uh, one of the top defensive ends, just a elite, seemed like an elite pass rusher that Penn State's been sorely missing on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, just, there's more. I'm sure Marty can, can <laughs> touch on some other ones because he is our recruiting guru at BSD. But, you know, that's – you know, with, with guys like that, I mean, it's definitely a nice little early Christmas present for Penn State football fans. Yeah, Penn State fans could not have asked for a better early Christmas present than this. Um, being the number six class in the country ties Penn State's 2018 class for the highest rate of Penn State class of the modern recruiting era. Um, that 2018 class, for those who are wondering, Micah Parsons was the headliner, uh, Odafe Owe, who if – was not for Micah Parsons, probably be the front runner for NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year, was also in that class. Um, Rashid Walker is going to be high draft pick this year. Jahan Dotson was in that class. Lots of talent in that class. Um, that said, while <clears throat> both these classes rank number six in the country, I have to give this class the edge as being the best class James Franklin has signed. And why? Because of quarterback. No knock on Will Levis whatsoever. He was the quarterback of that 2018 class. This class, even without Drew Alar, has Bo Perbula, who's one of the most prolific, most productive quarterbacks in the history of Penn State, or uh, excuse me, the history of Pennsylvania high school football, who is a four star prospect in his own right. Um, the constant comparison for Bo Perbula is Trace McSorley. And I think every Penn State fan would gladly take another Trace McSorley. But the biggest thing is, is Aller. He's the number one quarterback in the country for a reason. The kid is elite. The one thing that has plagued Penn State more than anything else during the James Franklin era is that elite quarterback play that can take you to the playoff. And I'm not saying Drew Aller is going to be Deshaun Watson, but the one thing I keep saying, so many people, and for a lot of right reasons, draw a lot of comparisons between James Franklin and Dabo Sweeney. And for the longest time, Clemson was Clemson. And then Deshaun Watson came along and they finally got over that hump. I'm not saying Drew Aller is going to do it. Nothing is a slam dunk, but Drew Aller could be Penn State's Deshaun Watson. The kid is that good. Um, like you said, Tim, one thing the staff has always done an excellent job of is identifying talent early. When Mike Yurcich first got to Happy Valley and they offered mm -hmm. Aller, he was like the 570th ranked player in the country or something like that. And I watched this film and I'm like, how on earth is this kid not rated higher? And I pounded the table for months for the kid to be rated higher. He had an incredible camp circuit in the spring. He went to the elite 11 and performed. He had a dominant high school season and per two, four, seven sports, he's now the number three player in the country. And that doesn't even begin to really scratch the surface because the elite quarterback is always going to draw the talent. But like Tim said, you have Nick Singleton, the number one running back in the country, the national Gatorade player of the year. 
Caden Saunders, who if he was an inch, inch and a half taller, is probably a top 10 player in the country. Um, our Clay Sourtig from Black Shoe Diaries, as well as Sean Fitz of 247 Sports, has said that Caden Saunders is basically Jahan Dotson combined with KJ Hamler. Like, sign me up. Sign me up for that. And just you go down the line. Like you said, Tim, deny down a sudden is going to be an elite pass rusher. You have Drew Shelton, who can be an excellent left tackle. In addition to, to, to Singleton, you bring in Katron Allen, a high four-star running back who's a top 150 player in the country. This defensive back class is phenomenal with Cam Miller out of Florida, Makai Flowers from Stilton High School up the street in Harrisburg, who could be an elite safety. Christian Driver, the son of Donald Driver, who can be an excellent safety. Um, if you want to nitpick, maybe you say they could have taken one more tackle, um, but they had another tackle committed into the morning signing day of Andre Roy. So it's really tough to complain about this class. I mean, hell, they even got the number one punter in the country. So, like, there, there really is no – other than saying, hey, you know, you probably could use another tackle. There aren't any real holes in this class. This is a phenomenal class. And, you know, this is the kind of class that really leads to – taking that next step as a program. And if you can stack classes like this together and, you know, this is a discussion for another day, but the 2023 class off to a tremendous start um, through their first four commitments and any lines, I think ranked third or fourth in the 2023 recruiting classes. So it looks like they might be able to finally start to stack those classes together. That's what it takes to go over this hump. But the biggest takeaway from this 2022 class is you have drew Aller, You finally have that elite quarterback and you have a ton of talent to go around him. Yeah, you know, Marty, uh, just to add on to the, uh, you know, to the excellent secondary players they've added, uh, KJ Winston, uh, who's from kind of from my backyard in uh, DeMatha Catholic out in Maryland, uh, Washington Post recently named him their all met uh, player of the year for, for football. Um, which is, you know, it was all, all met team is for like the best players in the DC metro area. And so pretty high honors for KJ there. He's a guy that I know Maryland was heavily after, heavily in the mix for. And, you know, Mike Loxley, I mean, say what you will about the results he's gotten in the field. It, you know, ha- hasn't been, you know, ha- hasn't been the greatest, but he's, he's good for pulling in a few local DMV kids every year and you know for you know Penn State beat them out for KJ Winston so that's a big big win for them there and you know I and I agree with everything you said about Drew Aller I mean that you know the one thing that this program has been missing under Franklin is that elite quarterback and uh, I would encourage people to there's if you go to YouTube if you look up uh if you look up uh there's this web there's this what was they called for the bloggy? They did a breakdown recently of Drew Aller's high school film, and they just point out just how incredible his vision not only his vision is, but also his ability to just drop, put the ball like right in the exact spot he needs to, like you know, into tight space, or he just needs to drop a dime over, you know, over a defender, or especially when and he's doing this when he's got, you know, pressure coming right at him. I mean, he stays, he stays there in the pocket. He doesn't panic and try to take off and run. I mean, he, he makes these kinds of throws, you know, what, whether or not there's a guy, you know, coming up right to his face. Uh, So it's definitely, it's definitely an eye opener. And, you know, obviously a little different when you're going up against college, you know, defensive ends or, linebackers as opposed to you know kids in northeast ohio wherever he's from medina yeah. um but still i his game certainly translates to the next level there's a reason why he was the highly rate highest rated mm-hmm. quarterback, high school quarterback in the 2022 class and why you and i are excited to see him 